Let's take a look at the can. That right there is what I'm using. Let me give you guys a quick look at how the table is prepped out. So what I did is separated the sections of the table and then down in here I put some uh, masking tape to help maybe make cleanup a little bit easier. I can pull that tape off and maybe not have to uh, do so much cleanup sanding between the leaf and the uh, table. And so I sanded it with 180 and then I used Clean Strip Odorless Mineral Spirits. This is what I used to wipe down the whole tabletop with. I, I went over the table, did a final inspection, and noticed that there were several uh, scratches that were still in the table, some of which came from when I took the, uh, the leaf and put it on top of this so I could tape it off. And so I took my 180 grit sandpaper, right, can you see the uh, right? 180 grit sandpaper and went over each and every one of those scratches and got those taken care of. In about the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm going to vacuum the table off one more time. And then after that's done, I'm going to mix the polyurethane. And then after that's done, I'm going to pour it into, I have a mixing cup here. From my favorite auto body supply store, Color Vision in Springfield, Missouri. And I'm going to pour it through one of these. That is a strainer. If you look in there, you can see that it's here. Let me move over. You can see that that has a very fine mesh screen in it. And I'm doing that to make sure we don't get any sort of debris or, you know, particles or anything like that into the, uh, into the mixing cup. So I'll be pouring it through this right here. This is a 3-inch purdy. Now the reason I chose the 3-inch brush is because it fits down into the mixing cup and so I can dip it down in there and then I can remove any extra polyurethane. I've already wiped the mixing cup out with mineral spirits. I went ahead and opened all three windows here in my kitchen because you, they say you really need to use this stuff in a well ventilated area. Uh, I've got the windows open I also have my front door cracked too to hopefully create some uh, cross venting and to help to deal with uh, some of these fumes. What they say is that you don't want to get any bubbles in this when you're stirring it. So in other words, you don't shake them, you stir them. So as that is the case, I'm gonna use my stirring stick here and I'm basically just gonna put it in a polyurethane. I'm gonna dr drag it across the bottom and lift it up like this, just to kind of help to blend everything together. This stuff is uh, its actually a little thinner than I thought it would be. But the key point here is don't uh, shake it up and don't get any bubbles in it. So now that I've been stirring it for a minute, it seems like it is thickening up just a little bit. So this is basically, I'm just putting this mixing stick down, going across the bottom and lifting to kind of blend all of the components in here together. I think that one of the things you could probably do to keep bubbles from pot, uh, forming in here is just to uh, mix it slowly. Yeah, don't 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 break out your blender, <laughs> you know. Okay, I'm gonna call that good right there. So just as soon as I got done pouring that, we'll put the cap back on the poly. And now the last thing I'm gonna do here, I think before I get started, is I have just an empty paint can here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to pour mineral spirits into it. So this way when I am done with my brush, I can just slam it right down into these mineral spirits and begin the cleaning process right away. Um, so I'm just looking over one more time, make sure nothing got missed. It's always better to do a uh, quality control inspection than have to go back and redo it. All right, here we go. Now, as I'm going here, I can see bubbles starting on the surface. And I'm not worrying about that because they say there's a way to get those popped out. 
And another thing they kind of said to do is to just press that brush down in to the wood and that will help to ensure that the polyurethane goes down into the grain. I'm just trying to put a nice even coat on it. Now the guys at the, the Home Improvement Center that I went to, they said that I didn't have to worry about putting any conditioner on this because it's a hardwood. But they did say that if it was a softwood, that I would ha probably wind up having to use conditioner so this way it doesn't get unevenly sucked into the grain of the wood. Ooh, there's a run. Thank goodness for drop claws. There's an area I didn't get. Let me slow down a little bit here and see if that helps. Okay. Now what they said is after applying the poly, is they said to go across the top, just barely touching the stuff with the brush. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to drag it lightly right across, like that. And supposedly, this will level out the top surface of that poly. And I get the rest of it from the other side. Let me go ahead and put a little more on this. So now I'm just going to drag it across the top, like that. And I can already tell just by how this feels that it's starting to set up. If you don't get an area covered and the poly is starting to get tacky, don't mess with it. Just wait until your next coat. Okay. And then just one motion, just with the tips of the bristles only. Just enough to break any bubbles. Notice how I'm working in one stroke all the way back and forth. I probably should be doing the edges first and then smoothing it out. And if your surface has dried, don't skim across the top. Just uh, fix it in the next coat. Okay, that's the second half done. I'm looking across to make sure that I don't have a lot of bubbles or anything like that. I think it looks pretty good. It doesn't have a lot of sheen to it, but I don't think it's going to have a lot of sheen to it. Not on the first coat. You know, they said that the odor from this would be fairly strong, but I don't, in my opinion, I don't think it is. But then again, I've worked with auto body stuff, and so I'm used to that stuff being just stinking the high heaven and everything, you know. First coat is not very shiny. Okay. Okay, so it's been about four hours now and the polyurethane is dry here. And so I'm going to start the sanding process. What we're trying to do is just simply sand it until this surface is smooth and no more. And if your polyurethane is not dry enough yet, then it'll start gumming up your sandpaper. And if that happens, stop wait a little while longer for it to dry a little more and then try again. All I'm really doing here is just sanding until I feel that it's smooth and no more. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work across the table this way and I'm just going to keep feeling it as I go. We're using no pressure. I'm just floating the sandpaper right over the top and just barely trying to take the top off. It's very, very easy to sand through. And so I'm just going to sand, and I can, I can actually hear it smoothing out. That is sexy smooth. Just what I like. When I get to the edge, I'm just going to take the paper and just let it do all the work. I'm not going to press down on it at all. But in order to get a good tooth for the next coat of poly to stick to this, they say to use 220 grit, and that's what I'm doing. 
seeing exactly what this is. Now let's get the feel here. That's all feeling real good. That's feeling real good. But I can feel here, as I'm running across with the sandpaper, I'm keeping the backside of my palm on the, on the wood here. And that's telling me that that's smoothing out real, real nice. So what I'm looking for, at least for me anyways, and I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not, but I'm looking for this to have an even haze, an appearance of even haze all the way across. And that's what's that and that's where I'm stopping. Whoops. I felt a, uh, a, a piece of something roll up under the uh, sandpaper and I could feel it rolling under the sandpaper over this uh, polyurethane. And so if you think that you have something between the poly and the sand sandpaper, stop and uh, get that out of there. Because that can do a lot of damage. And I know that from auto body and paint work. Yep, get a roller underneath your, uh, your uh, when you're wet sanding. Get a real nasty scratch across your new clear coat job. That can be a royal pain to deal with. Wow, that's a nice even haze all the way across the whole thing. I like that. I like that a lot. Just gonna barely transition over this edge with the sandpaper, not even with my finger. With my fingers, I'm just gonna let the sandpaper transition over the edge because I don't want to put any pressure there so I don't burn it. Okay, that's where I'm going to stop, right there. That's all nice and smooth. This is all nice and smooth. Got a fairly even haze over the whole thing. Sanding on automotive clear coat and this are probably the same way at least in one respect and that is no when to quit. So let me knock this down here. This edge is actually pretty smooth. We'll knock it down lightly. Oh yeah. Oh that's smooth. I mean that's really, really smoothing out. So basically on this part, I'm just trapping the sandpaper between my fingers like this. Put it down, trapping my trapping the sandpaper between the outside of the paper between here and here and then just, just going back and forth. This clear is uh, doing exactly what they said it would whenever it was dry is that it would turn into a fine powder when you're sanding on it. And boy they weren't kidding. Wow. Okay so here is my wet towel Let's just see how we do here. It's not perfect. There's still a few rough spots on it. It's not perfect. However, when I sand the next coat of poly, it should pretty well smooth out. Okay, so it's now day two of the application of the polyurethane going to be recoating it for a second time here in around an hour or so. Before I do that, I'm going to check everything and I'm going to make sure everything is all well sanded. There's a whole spot that I missed right there. Maybe a couple right there. Okay, so it's all vacuumed off now. I also dusted the drop cloth and then I also relieved myself of dust by going out into the shop and blowing myself off with compressed air. Now if you don't have compressed air, before you go any further into your cleanup process, you might want to just get yourself a change of clothes or something. Now I'm going to go ahead and just use water on a rag. I'm going to wipe this table down. So I'm going to flip it over, wiping with the grain. Preparation is going to be 99, where 99% of your efforts are spent. Putting on the actual finish is nothing. 
That's the easy part. It's the preparation. All the stuff you got to go through. Make sure that surface is ready to accept whatever you're putting on it. That's what I got off the far side. And this is what I removed from the other sides. Sure don't want that stuff in our job here. All right, let's get on it and let's see how this works out. I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna think I'm gonna try to go for a little better coverage this time. And that means I've gotta dip the brush into the poly a little more. There's definitely a much higher gloss on this the second time around. Still feels like it's wet enough. Yeah, I think that's pretty decent. So that's code number two. Okay, so I'm back now. It's been about four hours since I finished putting the second coat on. Grabbed my sandpaper here and started to lightly sand across the top of it. And my sandpaper started to uh, gum up a little bit. You see the, uh, eh, let me just point one out right there. Some spots like that. When they gum up like that, you get them spots in them like that. Yeah, it's just not dry enough to start cutting on yet. So, just as soon as I start seeing that go away, then I can start cutting on it. And if it doesn't, I'll just sand it tomorrow. No big deal.